In this video, we're going to be predicting radical bromination products. And we're going to be looking at bromination reactions of the same alkanes that we took at took a look at in the previous video, but in the previous video we considered chlorination reactions. Here we're considering bromination reactions. And what you have to remember is that bromination is far more selective than chlorination. So while chlorination is selective, so you will get more hydrogen abstraction at the more highly substituted carbons, but you will still get hydrogen abstraction at the less high, highly substituted carbons in the case of chlorination. But that is really not true for the case of bromination. So here, when you have a compound like butane with a mixture of types of carbons and thus hydrogens, here you'll have a primary carbon bound to three primary hydrogens. Here you have a, another primary carbon bound to three primary hydrogens. These two carbons are each secondary carbons and are each bound to two secondary hydrogens. You can expect substitution to only occur at these two secondary carbons. So, oops, they shouldn't be there. So this is really the only, this is really the only product here. If you had substitution at this carbon, This product is the same as this product. Because when you count from, from this point, one, two, three, four. And really, this is a, if you haven't covered stereochemistry yet, don't worry about it, but this is a racemic mixture of R and S. So this is an achiral product, even though it looks like there are four different groups attached. You will have, you will have both. You'll have both that compound as well as as this one, and, and uh, you'll have 50% of this, 50% of this. So the product molecule is not optically active. But we're gonna we're gonna ignore mirror image isomers for now. Okay. In this reaction. Again, you'll get substitution at the secondary carbons, but there are two possible secondary carbons, two distinct possible secondary carbons at which you can, can get substitution. So these two are the same, but this one is different from either of these two because these two are each one carbon away from the ends, while this one is two, carbon, two carbons away from the ends. So again, you'll get only secondary product, but there are two possible secondary products. Okay. Now here, you have primary carbons on the outsides. You have two secondary carbons. You have a tertiary carbon. And here this methyl this methyl group has primary is a primary carbon bound to primary hydrogens, but again, substitution will occur only at the most highly substituted carbon atom. So what you can expect is just this product here. And just as a reminder from, you know, just to review that bromination is very selective because it's very endothermic. And endothermic reactions tend to be more selective because the transition states have a lot of radical characters. The primary and, and secondary and tertiary radicals all have different stabilities so the transition states leading up to them must also have very different stabilities and also and consequently different enthalpies or energies so there will be a strong preference for the lower enthalpy transition states leading to formation of tertiary radical so that's the reason behind the 
selectivity and bromination. Okay, here you have you have four secondary carbons. One, two, three, four. You have a primary carbon and a tertiary carbon. You'll only get substitution at the tertiary carbon. So hopefully comparing this the products in this video to those in the chlorination video, which was a previous video, you'll get you know uh, you'll be able to refresh your mind on the difference in selectivity between chlorination and bromination.